Okay, so uh, good evening. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about Dolly 2, which is a pretty new model you know, for image generation. So the overall topic of the talk is going to be image generation with Visual AI, but we are going to focus on this new model and we're going to explain a little bit how it works and, and the different blocks that will allow to understand how can a Visual AI or machine is able to generate uh, images from scratch. So first, before going into the presentation a little bit about myself. I'm a PhD in Robotics and Artificial Intelligence from Spain, from Madrid, and I'm currently working since a few months ago in Collido as a deep learning engineer. So Collido is a company whose mission is making visual AI simple. Right now we have three main products. Uh, we have Remove BG, which is an application that allows us to remove the background automatically for an image. And we also have on screen, which is pretty much the same thing, but for videos and designify, which is a little bit more. We can do different composition with objects and different designs and automate this process for products and all current images. And we are also part of this big company called Canva. So we're part of the Canva family. And that's pretty much it. So uh, for, for the introduction. So, uh, in this talk, we're going to talk about image generation. I want to start with a little game. I'm going to present you with three different images. And I want to look you, for you to look at them and uh, tell me which images of these three have been generated by a machine and which one have been painted or drawn by hand by a person. So just take a little moment, look at the images and try to see if you can figure out which of them have been automatically generated by a machine and which one has been made by, by a person. Okay, so this is a little bit of a trick question because all of them have been generated by a machine. Okay, uh, more precisely, the first two of them, I did them by myself. This one was done with a style gun and that was uh, made with a clip plus an FFT generator, which I'm going to talk about in this presentation. And this one in the right of the image is pretty new. This came just a week ago and it's made by an AI called Dolly2, made by the company OpenAI, which has the peculiarity that this image has been made from a string of text. So someone wrote, I want an otter in the style of the girl with the pearl painted by this artist. And the machine just generated this image out of the blue and it really looks pretty nice. So in this presentation, we're going to learn how this system works and how can machines or AI um, generate images that can fool us into think that they have been made by a person. And we're going to go through several steps. The first step is going to be actually generating images. So I want to learn how it's possible that the machine is able to generate images. And the most common method until a few months ago for this thing or still a few years ago for this was generative adversarial networks, which is a fancy name for a couple of neural networks that are trained by a small competition between them. So we have first a network, the one on the left, which is called generator that is going to take a random number and from that number is going to output an image. And this number just uh, is used to generate different images. So to get random number and we get different output images. And it's going to try to make images that look like real images. And we're going to mix these fake images that the network made with a bunch of real images that we gather from the internet or whatever that represent real images that we want to actually generate. And we're going to shuffle them and mix them together and we're going to put these images in a second network that is called a discriminator. And discriminator's work is going to be to try to tell apart which are the fake images made by the other generator network and which one are real images. And we're going to train both networks at the same time. So this is going to be a little competition between them. And the more one of them gets better, the other one is going to have more feedback of what it needs to do to fake real images. So it's going to get better. And then the other one needs to get a little bit better. And with this game, we're training both at the same time with the balance between them. We're going to get a generator that's able to fake and to generate real images. Okay. Uh, there are many different generative adversarial network, but one that is pretty common because of their nice properties is called a StyleGAN. There are different versions of StyleGAN, 1, 2, and 3, but they all work pretty much the same. So they have a generator and a discriminator as well. But in this case, the generator has two main parts. We still have some network that takes a random number, but this, instead of generating directly the output image, it's going to generate a set of parameters for different layers so that these parameters represent different features in the image. 
and we have parameters in the first layer so that the image is going to be constructed from a small image and it's going to grow and the first layers are going to determine the overall course features of the image so if let, let's imagine these numbers as knobs that we can turn so different parameters that we can adjust and if we turn this knob in the first layers top layers we're going to be able to manage the course details of the image so we can change if it's a woman or a man has a beard has a glasses or something in the face and if we keep turning the knobs in the lower layers we are going to be able to adjust for more fine details such as the color of the image the color of the hair it has like closed eyes open eyes so that's why it's called a style gun because it allows us with these parameters to control the overall style of the image and we can generate uh, in this case we train with lots of different faces and it's able to generate new faces by turning these parameters but still it's not that easy to control it because if we for example generate this face of this person and we want to control we don't really like this one we want to control it a little bit and we can make it uh, change the position of the head or just make it a bit older or change the color of the hair make a bigger smile whatever we want to do there's not really a knob for that so the knob are just controlling different features but they don't relate to actual things like smiling or age on that kind of stuff so you actually need to turn all the knobs in a certain way so that you can control that which a bit it's possible but it's a bit difficult and it's not really intuitive for the user so it's, you cannot really control it as as simple as a slider to say okay i want something older or something younger so we can improve we can do things better and can improve this method so next step after generating the image would be guiding this generator in such a way that you can generate something uh, that you can control in an easy way and for this i'm going to introduce a different network it's called clip clip stands for contrastive language image pre-training and it's basically a network that will take an image and a piece of text and it's able to compare the image with the text and score how well this things go together so if in this case for example we have clip that is composed of two networks one network will take the picture of the dog and will output a number that is like an id for that for that image and as well with the text we have another network for encoding the text so we can say a picture of a dog and encode it with another id and a number and then we can compare these two ids and if they look similar then it means that this picture is actually something that is like a picture of a dog but if instead we have a picture that is not really a picture of a dog then these two numbers will be very different and we can say okay this is not a picture of a dog and why is this useful because we are talking about image generation this is not generation this is just uh scoring so this is useful because with this network we can then do an image optimization we can start from a random image that is not like a dog and we can say okay i want a picture of a dog and we could take this picture obtain the id take the text of the ID and compare them and with this comparison we can have some feedback of how we can change the image so that it looks like a dog so we can modify a little bit the pixels check again say okay this is again not a dog it's more like a dog but it's still not a dog and we can repeat this process and with repeated this process enough times we get something that looks a little bit more like a dog but still not a dog but we can repeat this process another time little by little changing this a little bit and we will finally end up with something that looks like a picture of a dog. In this process, we can use text to generate images. This is still um, not very efficient because in real life, pixels of the image are not really independent. So if you take a picture of a dog or a face, for example, of the picture, all the pixels that compose the eye of the person, for example, they cannot be random pixels. They just need to be the shape of an eye. There are different eyes, different eye shapes, eye colors, but all the eyes look like an eye. So if we, instead of uh, modifying the pixel independently, have some way of putting all this knowledge about the world inside the network, we can generate more efficiently uh, pictures. And we actually do have this knowledge because as I told you before, there are generator networks that can generate faces. So what we can do is instead of just editing the pixels one by one we can instead take for example a picture of a face and say i want a smiling face from this picture and we can compare but instead of using the feedback for changing individual pixels of the image you can use this this feedback for changing the knobs of the layer the different parameters of the layers 
which is something that if you do it by hand, you don't really know how to do it, but since it's an automatic process, it's much simpler. So if we combine this generator network that we trained before with this knowledge about what is text and image and how well they relate to there, we really have a nice method to obtain and to edit images uh, with natural language, with sentences, and without any real knowledge at, of what's going on below. And most of the methods that currently exist for generating AI art and images on the net that you see use some variation of this. So maybe the generator network is not a style gun, it's another different model, like a diffusion process or something like that. But the method is pretty much this thing. So we have some input image that is ranked with clip and compared to a text. And then this feedback is used to adjust some values of the generator so that we get the picture that we want. But this is a good thing, but we can improve it a little bit more because this is, as I said, an iterative process. We can need to go over and over trying by trial and error, adjust a little bit, adjust a little bit until we get. So it would be really nice if instead of running this all the time, we just have some method to do this directly. And this is exactly what this new model made by OpenAI does, this DALI2 model. So this is a model that came out recently, just last week, by a company called OpenAI. And the thing that this model introduces is a new network here that acts uh, as an intermediary between the clip network and the generator. So in this case, for example, we can ask for an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style. And with clip, we can obtain this ID that we talked before. And this ID will uh, encode all this meaning in the sentence about what is an astronaut, what it means riding a horse and everything. And using this description, this ID, what Dolly does is to add a pretty large neural network in between that is able to learn how to translate from this ID to the knob value. So instead of having to go around and optimize this through several iterations, it directly can predict right from the ID of the clip embedding the values of the knobs of the generator. We can get images such as this astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic scale. And using Clip has another advantage. Additionally, that as we saw before, Clip can encode text, but also images. So if instead of encoding the text, we take a random picture like this Dolly paint, um, Dali painting and we encode it with Clip, we can use this description of the image and we can uh, make this Dolly 2 system to generate images that look like that picture. So we're asking for similar things by basically the essence of the picture, but it's not the exact picture. So it's just variations with different style of the same picture. And even more, we can also take an existing picture and say, okay, in this place that I marked in the image, I want you to add a flamingo. And then the system will just take this information run again the generator, turn the knobs, and we will get a flamingo in the image in the place where we want it. And we can actually say, no, but I don't want it here. I want it to be there. And the network still put it there. And if you look at it quite closely, you can see that even the reflections on the water are there. So it has some knowledge of the world, some knowledge of the physics of the world, and knows that if you put some object in the water, then you need a reflection for that, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to finish the talk with some other pictures made by Dolly, an avocado chair and some other photorealistic, and just with an, a reflection that in the future years, we're going to see more and more of this technology because it's a very powerful way of generating images and editing them. So it's a good thing to get used to this kind of technology and, and because it's going to be present in many, many applications in the future. And just to end the talk, so thank you very much for your attention. And just to mention that in Collider we are currently hiring. So if you like the talk and you think that you can work in this and you like the topic, you can always send your CV and, and try to get there. We are a nice, a very nice place to, to work. And we will be glad to accept new newcomers. Um, thank you.